You're listening to Melissa Gorga on display with me, Melissa Gorga, on Podcast One. Power Penny days are back, just in time for spring at JCPenney. Stock up on wardrobe staples to home essentials, like tees for the family, select styles starting at $7. Soak up the savings with $5 home expressions, quick dry bath towels, and an array of colors. Or use your coupon to save an extra 25% store wide. Incredible prices, spectacular savings. Hurry and Sunday. JCPenney offers in coupon valid 324 to 327. Some exclusions apply. See store or jcp.com for details. Power Penny deals excluded from the coupon. You're a funny I'm, guy, bro. Uh, you're a funny guy. No, you're no. funny. You're funny. I love you. What's up, everybody? We are back for another episode of On Display with Melissa Gorga. On display, on display, each and every day. Did you think I was going to start singing? <laughs> on display, on display. That was so embarrassing when I did that on season three. No, it wasn't. Yes, the best. next to the piano. That was like so weird, right? No, it was like, embarrassing. When I go back and watch it, I notice two things. My nose is completely different and it just has the bump in it. No one realizes that I only did the bump. I never really did the tip. I, I, I really want to do the tip still. Um, I only did the bump. But. My makeup was really good in it. I had great makeup oh on. Oh, my God. The I, makeup. <laughs> I had great makeup on. But, you know, I'm just standing there by the piano, just singing. Mm. I just want to say, as a first timer on The Real Housewives of New Jersey, that took a lot of guts. Who just stands there and sings a cappella? Wait, did you even introduce me? No. You just... Guys, I forgot to tell everybody. My oh guest my for today. <laughs> yeah, 18 well, years you... later, they forget about you. You just started talking, so I thought people would assume, but that's kind of funny. You're right. Okay, so, sorry. I started to sing, and then Joe chimed in. So, you know, he's very impatient. You didn't let me give you a proper introduction. Okay, give it. Go ahead. I, okay. want, I want a good one. Oh, proper. how about one as if you're not my husband, just like as if you are the star and Joe Gorga. There you go. Yes. Okay. Okay. Okay, everyone. For this podcast, I have a very special, funny guest. This guy, I would say, uh, he's on a reality TV show. He works really, really hard. He's an up-and-coming comedian. He's known to be a great father, a great husband. Outstanding father and husband. Um, I'm, I'm doing this introduction. Okay. And um, just an overall really hard-working, good guy. Ladies and gentlemen, here we have Joe Gorga. Hello, everybody. Thank you for having me, Melissa Gorga. You're welcome. Thank yes, you for thank being here. You. It's a pleasure. I'm so happy you came to our living room today. I'm so honored. I'm, I'm very honored. You know what? Normally, we do the podcast from my office, but we are home today in my house, and we're in, in our dining room, actually. And um, so you might hear a dog bark. You might hear a Gino yell. You might hear an Antonia bitch something. <laughs> yeah, definitely. <laughs> and you hear Joey say he's hungry. That could definitely happen as well. But let's go back to on display when you were singing. You know what the most embarrassing moment of that episode was? Uh -oh. Because everything about you is amazing. Because I love when you sang. I thought you you were... like when I sing. But I like, loved I think it. It's, like sometimes when you when I watch it back, I actually guys, I know this. Like I actually can like hold a tune. I can, or else I wouldn't like. I have a little melody. Yeah, you're right? very was, good. I have That's a little. Right. I have a little harmony in my system. Yeah, I was proud of you. I was ready. I'm not an amazing singer, but I can hold a note. Is it that was great. You were, you were awesome. But you know, the funniest moment and the most embarrassing moment was when you, right before the episode, I was in the room and you got on your hands and knees and you prayed to God. You said, no, please, God. That's not that episode. <laughs> that, yes, I was, that was, oh that is, God. that is funny. That was, but that was me. That was there. a real moment, people. Real. She was wanted, shaking in her skin. I really was scared to death. You were. And they, that he, now Joe's talking about the season finale of season three when I like performed for the first time. And that's when Caroline. Manzo was on the show. Albie and Chris were there watching. Jacqueline Lorita, they were all there to support yep. your sister. And I had to perform for the very first time. And I had choreography and dancers. And I was so stressed out. And I was backstage praying on my knees to the, to the Lord Jesus Christ himself. 
wasn't I? Yes, you were. That and and let me just tell you, that was I'm that was some real. I go back and real. watch it now, and I'm making the sign of the cross, and I'm, like I was seriously stressed out. Nobody realizes. Like now, I, I'm a little bit more calm, cool, and collected. But that was like my first time on a reality TV show. The whole world seemed to be like coming down on me. I was like, why am I singing in front of a TV? The world's it wasn't it didn't air yet, so I wasn't ever on TV yet. I was literally just filming this show and I'm like, I'm about to sing and the whole world's going to watch it. Like, this is crazy. So I truly was on my knees praying to God. <laughs> I was checking her <laughs> underwear. The sign of the cross. There was a brown stain on it. That's how I... <laughs> She just Ew, looked at me like. so weird. She just jumped Who out of her. Who says that? Guys, he's lying. And that's just like a weird. I Sometimes said... I think men. And now uh, we're going to jump to a different subject because of that. I think that men are go backwards. Like, I feel like he's getting more immature. So ladies, please DM me and let me know. I do. Like, he says things like that. He didn't used to say that when we date or like... Because we're fun. We're going to take everything serious. No, I Your whole life is serious. I think you you talk... Like, you you revert back to like your younger years. Yeah, because I went to work... I got up this morning at five o'clock in the morning, went to work all day, stressed, angry... Okay, but... Argued all day. I want to come home. I don't want to be serious. Right, I didn't and you say can't, you have to be like, serious, but like, I'm saying a lot of the things you do, not just that. What to do you me, think? You remind think me that like I'm dating a high school. You guy think everything sometimes. you do, I like? I just shut up. I don't tell you. I'm I just look the other way. The problem is with women. I'm here's the problem. More no, I got to get loud. I'm you, Italian, and she always tells me to shh. Your sh- ear. No, he talks I, so loud because I like to speak loud. I'm Italian, and that's how I grew up. So, when the problem is with men, women, I'm going to be honest with you, especially women, you. You like nitpick every little thing. Oh my God, he said that, or you did that. You put the ta- you put the cup on the table too loud. How many times have oh, I heard that? Oh, because that's a thing you've been starting to do too. So like, there's these little pet peeves that I didn't have about you before that I'm starting to find. So, you know how many pet peeves I have? about Okay, you? but like this but is what I you do. Up. You take a sip, right? So if we're out to dinner, you'll take a sip of your drink, and just for some reason, you don't place it down on the table. It's like a, it's like a. It's like a bam it. And it's almost like you're mad when you put it down. Okay, so people. But you're not mad. Let me tell you something. But it's such an aggressive way to put the glass back down. Do you know how many times, I'm going to say real true, true story, I swear on my parents, they're in heaven, how many times you slam that cup on that table? No, you just You do it, but I don't say. just... No, but you do. No, but you kind of, you copy off me. But I don't ever say me. anything. You copy I don't... off me. Find your own pet peeve. But no, but you do. But no, I, I'm giving an example that you do it too, but I don't care. I'll, I'll see it. And I'm like, all right, because I'm cooler and I'm chill. No, no, yes. no, no. That's not true. There are so many things that you do that I'm like, oh, my God, I want to say something. But I don't want to fight with you. I'd rather like. Okay, well, I'm going to I'd rather you. be in a good mood so I could get laid. And yeah, that's it. We don't, that's what life is about. You know about. what I mean? Is that all life is yeah, about? Yeah, because if I start fighting with you and argue all the time, then, you know, and then sex won't happen. So forget it. I'll just shut up. <laughs> let you be whoever you are. And I just want to be. I just want to have fun. So in your relationship, don't pick the little things because it. It's not worth it. Just Are you saying don't nitpick? nitpick the little okay, things. But I, but Enjoy not, each other. Enjoy each other. It's very important. That's not necessarily important. nitpicking. I'm telling you, when you put the glass down. That's and nitpicking. It's, no, and it's aggressive. I have to tell you, Joe, you keep slamming this glass. It's a little aggressive. Mm-hmm. But listen, guys. So you, anyway. Don't nitpick because you know it's not worth it. Just love each other and be happy. Okay, but I have to tell you when things bother me because then they're going to just build up. That's I believe a- that people should. You have to communicate in life. I feel like we have a big problem. Not us, but like that could be a big problem. Even just watching these episodes of Housewives lately. It's like nobody knows how to communicate. Like it's like yeah. nobody, nobody. Even when I got up. Oh, I'm sure you guys also saw this episode of The Real Housewives of New Jersey. How frustrating was it? I mean, I, I, I. Honestly, all I did was get up and because I couldn't communicate with Jennifer and I needed to like express what I had to say. And I hated that she was picking on you. I really did. She calls you a little bitch boy or something. In I this. Give it. I really and it don't. really pissed me off. Joe. She's, you, she was very disrespectful. So it pissed me off. You, you, you and I walked her, right? aggressively at her to say, listen to me. And she grabbed my hand, which is a, like, that's not cool. Like how we're not, we're not in high school. We're not touching each other. It's one thing to like speak back and forth. That pissed me off. Like that, when when she put her hand on me like that, it took everything in me because I, I know better. And, you know, you guys were all right there in two seconds to be like. I jumped is, right in. You Bill, were there. Bill, Bill was walking off a cliff somewhere. He's like, please kill her. Please. No. Somebody kill her. <laughs> no, he was. He, he was hoping somebody beat that. You he know, was just yeah, like, oh, well, let me know how it goes, guys. He was walking the other way. Um, But like. Yeah, I that said, let was... me save my wife. God forbid somebody hits but her in her face, that beautiful face. I didn't want nothing to happen to you, honey. That's what I'm talking about when it comes to 
communication. Like, yeah, how about this communication? Now. Forget about the show. Let's talk about real life stuff. So I'm building envy for uh, Miss Melissa Gorga here, right? So, and I'm building it. And yesterday, this yesterday, she pissed me off so bad because she drives by the store and she's like, "What are you doing?" Because the designers were coming there at eleven o'clock or five o'clock in the afternoon, and she's like, "You're not ready." I see a cloud of smoke in there, and should I cancel them? And she starts just bitching about everything. And here we are, we're working so hard, we got all this thing. She's like, "The the, the mirrors are not up, and this is not up." And I was just there an hour ago, and I said, "How do you know the mirrors are not up?" Now I'm aggravated because I'm at my other sites. I'm working so hard. I'm running around for her to get this done, and she tells me, like, you, what's this? What's that? What's that? She's okay, complaining well, about everything. And I said, how do you know the mirrors are not I was not complaining. I simply said to you, guys, if you to, to cue you in here, I'm sure most of you know already, we are building a new Envy. It is coming out, Joe, right? Oh, my God. Very nice. Yeah, guys, gorgeous, stunning. like gorgeous, gorgeous, gorgeous. Wait till you see the new Envy. You are going to, like, lose your mind. It's, in, it's insane. So... Joe, obviously, we're doing a lot of the construction together. We have, you know, I have some of his guys. I have electricians. So, you know, whatever it is I have going on over there. I have a designer helping me decorate, which you're going to see how incredible it looks. Um, so anyway, Joe and I were just in Turks and Caicos. We've been running around like chickens with our head cut off. Is that fair to say? Like Definitely. we are working over time. So we're both a little crabby. Yes, we're vacation. We went on a small vacation also. Right. Oh, we went to Turks and Caicos. The Vegas for work. We went to Vegas for work, Turks and Caicos. Leaving uh, tomorrow. And then, well, no. And then um, Florida we had to go to because Joe had a week of comedy out there. So we've been traveling a lot. We're cranky. We're building a house. We're building envy. It's a lot. And plus of all the other things we have going on. Wrestling, cheer, competition. Like, building all my buildings. Joe's building his building. It's, 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 I'm no pretty, one, it's crazy. I don't it's think crazy. anyone would believe but, like what we do from... 6 a.m. to like 7 p.m. No one, I, I, one thing you got to hand it to us, like we are savages when it comes to like work ethic. We work, we grind. You got to grind because you know what? But I, we party hard too when we party. Well, you work hard, play hard. That's my motto. I love to, you know, work it's extremely hard, but we have to, when we have play, we play. We have to enjoy ourselves because if you don't, you're going to burn out. Let me explain so. this even. We were both just losing our minds trying to get things done in this house. Like, I've been working all day. I've ran to Envy, the other Envy, already today. I've been to my store today. I've been to the new house today. I met you at the new house today. I met the electrician at the house today. I packed Gino and Joey today. I uh, ran to the town of Franklin Lakes. <laughs> I, I, I mean, I haven't stopped all day between Good. everything else, right? You went right? to the town? You were working. Good. You were working. All day, you were at Envy. You were. At, I saw you at the house. You were at your buildings, and I just literally called him. He runs in. He sits down just now at this dining room table we're sitting I at. I didn't even eat yet. We didn't even Starving. eat dinner yet. I have a seltzer right now in a wine glass with a lemon because you know I was gonna go for the wine, but I have so much to do tonight that I'm like, if I drink wine, it's gonna be over. He comes in. He's still in his dirty work clothes. He. I plop his butt down right next to me, and here we are doing the podcast like we're just it's pretty crazy but thank you joe by the way because i know you didn't even eat dinner yet he's got sun chips she's, oh, he's, oh she thanks me i'm wow. a good person I'm a, <laughs> no no i'm you're, a very you're good. a diva bitch you are why would you say that no why would you make people think that that's why not you are, true why you, you never, are to you me never said that to, to me, me you are i'm sorry i don't give a shit i'm gonna tell you how it is you are you're a bitch to don't me sometimes say that. you, you are sometimes you get into this mood you have never said that to hold me on before. because you are no when it becomes to like this work and stuff like that see in, in a I'm, relationship when it comes to work i am here's yes. what guys in a relationship a husband and a wife should respect what they do it's it's a word that destroys everything makes me so mad because i would never say to you what are you doing i can't believe you you it's, let's cancel That's everything you don't rely on me for a lot of the like construction no stuff. but i rely on you other things but yeah I don't, and I don't... it all gets done so you never have to bitch yeah, but at i'm me. not bitching at you see while... like i cross all my t's and dot wait, wait. all my eyes let, let's why your envy's not getting done it's getting done. Did the people, when the designers showed up at 5 o'clock, did they do what they had okay, to do? Okay, but if I didn't Was there call- a big dust mess like you yes, said? Come yes, yes. I mean, hold on. Let's, Fact. Let's spot, if I a didn't, spade a spade hold on. What? If I didn't call you when I did to say, this 
is not, not true. cleaned and it's the guys were there dusty. Already. Everybody was there. It already. is not ready that. for the designer to walk through the door. You were like, hold on. No. I'll get there in a little bit with all these guys. She's wrong. Here's the thing. In a relationship, in a marriage, it's called about respect. Now, if you would have called me up and said, hey, babe, listen to the word, guys. Hey, babe, I, I, I drove by Envy and I see there's a big cloud. Uh, is it is it dirty? What's going on? We have the designers come. Are we going to be ready? I don't have time huh, to stop talk it. That way, I'm tired. Uh, is it going to be ready, honey? Because you're working so hard. I know you ran back and forth seven, eight times. You're doing so much to get Envy ready, babe. Is it ready, honey? It's going to be ready. Don't worry about it. There's not a big dust cloud, hon. And it's almost done. I, I got guys. That. Are, you're sh- like, wow. Wait, 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 wait. Let me finish because the delivery was so wrong, and I wanted to stab you if I could. I hated hey, you. I was like, so I was like, you're because because I'm working. I'm tired. Jeez, I'm never gonna pull him out of work again Hold to on. be on the podcast because I'm working. I'm tired. I want a little respect. So in a relationship, respect is everything. You get respect. You get. I it. do, but those little words. All right, all right. You so cannot we had a, say we that. Had a moment. We were a little stressed out. It's like if somebody's working you hard. Understand? I'm. Sh- if I, a I'm, mom is working hard. With the kids all day, and I come home and I say, "Why didn't you go uh, clean the clothes? What did you do all day? You're gonna flip out because you were just fixing the kids. You know your baby's crying. You fed the baby. You're running around like." And I say to you, "What did you do? You understand?" Yeah, I get it. I get it. But I, I had to let you know that what you said was gonna be done was not right. So, did you learn? Did you learn from this? That's all I want you to say. Did you learn? Did you make? Did you think you made a mistake the way you talked to me? I don't in the heat of the moment. But but I had Antonia on speaker, by the way, in the car, and she even said when we hung up, "Wow, he's." He's mad. I go, I didn't even say anything to him. Well, because you... And you totally freaked out because you, you by the way, are very stressed out. No. Nope. Yes, you are. You're overworked. No. Nope. You're doing a lot of comedy on top I've of your real you job, me. on top of your real life. And I think that that's crazy. True. You're very stressed out. Not true. What, what, what I want is a little respect that I'm, I'll run all day for you. I'll run to the moon and back, right? I just want a little respect that, and, and appreciation. Not to tell me... I can't like bitching the whole time. Just say, babe, what's going on? Are you going to be so- ready? It's like me going to Envy and saying, honey, this clothes, all your clothes is horrible. You should shut the store down. And you're going to be like, what? What do you mean? It's, it's it, your delivery. I don't know, wrong. ladies, you tell me when you I, first of all, if anyone has ever built a house or has, you know, a redone <laughs> home out there, <laughs> try to redo their homes. Um, you tell me like I know a lot of husbands and wives, they argue over renovations and just like projects they're doing on the house. I know that it could be fun, but it's also stressful to a marriage. How about this guy? Okay. So like there's a subject here. Online shopping isn't slowing down anytime soon. Is your business ready to keep up the pace with ship station? You'll never worry about shipping again. Make the switch to a solution that handles all of your shipping needs quickly, affordably, and painlessly. ShipStation is already trusted by over 100,000 e-commerce sellers. You can keep track of orders from any sales channel. You can easily find the best shipping carrier, and you can automate just about any shipping task with just a few clicks. ShipStation can save you time and money. The most important things when running a business. Ship more in less time with ShipStation. Use my offer code Melissa to get a 60-day free trial. That's two months free of no hassle, stress-free shipping. Just go to ShipStation.com, click on the microphone at the top of the page, and type in Melissa. ShipStation. Make ship happen. There's a subject here with like husbands and projects. It's That's always a true. thing. It's like even if you're going to like paint the bedroom, like I feel like it turns into a project. Yeah, I would at home. Be, it would be mad if you tell me to paint the bedroom like a certain color that you picked and then you came there and you walked in and you were like, "What is that? That's disgusting. I can't believe it. I'm halfway. I'm almost done." And you're like, I hate it. I'm like, you picked the color. No, I hate it. And you redo it. And that's yeah, that's a pain in the ass. You're a husband well, yeah, but and, and a wife like- are going to argue. Now if you walked in and say, Oh my God, babe. Oh my God. What color is that? I'm like, babe, you picked it. Oh my God. I made a mistake. I'm so sorry. I made a mistake. I'm so sorry. I don't like it, honey. Can you repaint it? Yes, baby. No problem. But if you come in like a, like saying something that I did wrong when it's really what you did wrong, it's a problem. Okay. So, so is that your advice to the ladies out there? If their yes. husbands are working on a project for them or if they're, you know, working on something, how how should we... It's how you talk. We need to be more patient with you guys? It's not more patient. I'm, I'm patient with you. 
I don't come home and tell you you don't do shit all day, or you're doing that wrong. I, I say I'm try. I always no, try to no, be respectful you def- and you, nice. Well, you'll say what's for dinner, and I'm like, this is for dinner, and you look at me like you don't like what I said. But what's then, for dinner? Yeah, so then, how do you how do you think we feel? But I look at it, and I'm like, oh, I worked all day. I eat that. But I don't say nothing bad. <laughs> but yes, I don't you, say, you just said that. That's but I don't you bitch at you. Said. Yeah, I could say my little comment, like, but I'm not saying, oh my God, and when I'm eating, I eat it and I shut up. What am I going to do? You're going to eat it and shut up. That's because what I'm doing. What else are you going to go to Wendy's? She, she made a taco tonight. I, I don't want to eat a taco, I, but I'm eating it. What? You eat love it. tacos. The gr- I made the ground beef. We <laughs> cut up the cheese on the side. We have hard and soft Whoa. shells. Mm. There That's is chopped so up lettuce and tomato. What is wrong with a nice little it? taco? It's Tuesday. I'm not saying Taco it. Tuesday. Just please tell me what's wrong with <laughs> it's that. It's Taco Tuesday. It's Taco Tuesday. Right, so I'm going to eat it. I didn't say Okay, I'm son of a bitch. You if you don't ta- want to eat ta- And a nice little salad on the side. Yeah, okay? Yeah, a beautiful it's salad. Salad. Right. salad. What is wrong with that? It's Taco Tuesday. All right. Okay. So that's what I don't know, ladies. I guess like. That is a subject when we're talking about men and like projects and just getting. So you're gonna apologize done. to me? I'm sorry if I came off aggressive, but oh. I'm very, I'm very See, overworked. Nice. I'm exhausted. See? Is the real word? Yes. You're exhausted too, or you wouldn't have taken it so to heart because I was like, whoa, I didn't even say nope. anything, and you were like, Wah! I will always take that to heart, exhausted or not, because I'm working hard for someone. It's like you just don't. You just it was wrong. And well, I'm glad that you admitted that will, you were wrong. I'm sorry if okay. I said things a little abruptly. I'm you. very, I'm very overworked. We are. Joe and I are having like a month right now. We are stressed out. I think a lot of it's for my extra is the building of the house and for you too, uh, designing it all, picking everything out, talking to this guy, talking to that guy, no, the cabinet guy, the tile guy. The no, HVAC. you know what's bad with me? That's stressful to it's me. It's not stressful for me because that's what I do for a living. What's stressful is COVID. COVID really put a, a damper into my whole business. And it's been hard to get materials and, and just the time and, and the architects are working slow or overwhelmed and the engineers and getting paperwork. So it's been hard. COVID really hurt the construction business. It's delayed me a year and a half on some projects. It cost me a, a year and a half of carrying costs and I'm losing a lot of money. So that's, I'm very, very stressed with that. Yeah. So um, um, that's when your wife should pick you up and make you feel better, not knock you down yeah, right so that's I mean, what we do in a relationship when the other when your partner is suffering with something you be there for them i agree well what about that time i, I mean joe and i you know the funny part is you know joe and i are running around like chickens with our heads cut off and we have a lot of projects going on and you know i have a lot of side businesses and he's building his buildings there's a lot of stuff a lot of good stuff right joe so we're grateful Knock we would say word. for that yes. we work yes. really hard and we have a lot right now that on our plates and it's crazy we should appreciate all the hard work there was a time when like you know, we were like down and out. When, what year was that? 2007, I think it was. 2007 I... when the market crashed. Yes, because I had... The real estate market crashed. Yep. I just had Gino. And um, we were, we you know, we're very lucky now that we're making money and we're, we're working and we're moving. But we had a time, and I wrote about this in my book, that I actually had to go to Costco and call Joe from Costco and turn around and go home because I literally only had... $50 in my pocket. Do you remember that, Joe? Oh, yes, I do. So what happened was I was building a big building. Um, Melissa was pregnant. Um, we, I think I had just had Gino. So did you I just had, have him? I, I either was pregnant or I just had Gino. No, you, you, we, we, had, we had Antonia. We had Antonia. Gina, a, you were pregnant with Gino, so Antonia was young, too. Yeah, she was, too. Yeah, so she's pregnant. And, so she didn't um, have diapers, so I think it had to be Gino. Like, yeah. I was newborn. He was a newborn. Okay, I was building um, this big building that I... I, I Real large. It was my biggest project ever that I ever took on. And uh, I was also had like a bunch of houses, 10, 15 real estate homes under contract. And all of a sudden, this is bef- in 2003, 4, 5. You put a house on the market, would sell it immediately. And then all of a sudden, one day, they just said, oh, the real estate bubble has bursted. And all the houses I was building were sitting. The banks pulled all the construction loans. I was out of money. And... um there was, a, and I go. And Melissa calls me up one day, and make, I'm going to make this quick. She calls me up. She was like, "Oh my god, we, we." I, oh, I know. just basically told him that I needed diapers, and you know, we were at a time where we were pretty broke. We were building our house in Montville. Okay, so that big house that no, you we were got, in already. No, we were not, because I remember being in the rental house driving with you. Okay, so we were building. Uh-huh. We were we were almost done building our big house in Montville. So we were really 
just at a point where we were like barely making ends meet, just trying to make it all work out. And yeah, we moved in. We didn't finish like four or five rooms. Right. Yeah, right. We, and we, you know, I had just had Gino. I called him and I said, you know what, Joe, I need diapers. Like, I don't know what to do. So he was like, and I had no money, you know, she had no money. The she credit had, cards. We had the credit cards max at the time. We had all of the credit card max. She used to have spend whatever she wanted on a card. Then I put a stop to that. I gave her a hundred dollars a week. I said, I get you gas. I get you pampers. I get some food. She was like, what? I said, yeah. yes. And, and, and I, and obeyed. she did it. She did what, you know, we, we had no choice. And we then had no choice. And, and then, then, so he picks me up and he's driving me to Costco so and she, true story. She calls me up. I need, I need, I need pampers. And I'm like, oh my God, I got $75 in my pocket. And I, I'm building this large building, and I didn't even have any more money. I had no avenues to get money. It was so bad. So I, we, I, I come pick her up, get the kids in the car. We drive right to Costco, a big department store that sells. Uh, we went to, we Everybody went there because you could get, you get these Pampers for like forty bucks, a big pack. So we pull up. I wait for her outside. She runs in. She gets the Pampers and something else. Something I said, no, don't spend more no. than sixty bucks or fifty bucks or whatever. She goes inside. And she comes up to the register and we have like a membership. Yeah. So you have to have like a Costco membership. And when I go up to pay for the diapers, I only had 50 bucks in my hand. And they said, your membership fee is expired. And it was $50 to renew the membership fee for Costco membership. So they were like, you know, you're, you're, you're expired. So I call Joe and I'm like, Joe, I need another 50 because we're expired. And he's like, forget it. Come back out. Like literally couldn't give me another $50 bill. And we went to like CVS and just picked up like a small thing of diapers until we figured it out like the next day or whatever it was. And that literally was a time where, you know, I feel like we learned a lot about each other. That was us showing our, like we're hustlers and we hustled out of that. We worked our way out of it. But that was definitely definitely like a rough time for us and there you go that's a time when husbands and wives need to like group together and really like see eye to eye and make it work in like the worst time ever yeah yeah and and listen you you showed me your true colors it was true love at the time you really you really were an amazing wife because you know i you you could have flipped out on me and said what the, what we you know i don't want to live this way who knows but i i couldn't control it but we really we we came together and we did what we had to do we did. We've come a long yeah. way. We went from not being able to buy diapers and I think we're doing pretty good. Yeah. Right. But yeah. it's like it was a work. It was work. We worked with our two hands and came out of it. And here we are. So that was just a quick little story. I don't know how we got off on that tangent, but that was a quick little story to explain that, like, you know, there's tough times. And if but, anyone is going through tough times out there and you're at the point that Joe and I were at in 2007, Believe me, there's light at the end of the tunnel. You can work your way out of it, right? Because it doesn't it doesn't always have to stay that way. We didn't know how we were going to get out of it. We didn't know what we were going to do, and we figured it out. So, But what we did do, no matter how hard it was, we always partied. Not partied, but we went out. And we couldn't afford maybe the big expensive dinners, but we went to like date night, right? And, right? We went to like a chain, and we would eat at a small chain and... And, and, and come uh, home and watch a movie. Well, our we, favorite chain usually is Outback. Yeah, but no matter what we did, we <laughs> still went out and and we spent time together. Right? Yeah. That we yeah. always party. No, you have no, to. We always do. You have to. We always do. So. And, you know, let's not forget that good company doesn't cost a thing. Got it? Yeah, that was a good one, babe. Yeah. Yeah, and I, I like that. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, good so, company costs nothing, guys, and that's really the most important thing that you want to take from this, right? Yeah. So, and, and we also take from this this podcast that you know, a, an apology is everything, and it meant, it meant so much to me. And I, I just want to bring that up again. And it was, well, it was amazing. I can't that guarantee that I'm not going to be like frustrated and overworked and start screaming at you because it happens, and well, that's just life. Well, now you're at an age, and we're building a house, and we're building envy, and we're building all these things. So I'm exhausted. But now you're at an age that you you should know it. Just it should know. Okay, I, I'm. Not, I shouldn't act that are way. Are you belittling me? No. Then we are. Then we are also at an age that you shouldn't like talk about poop and stuff or well, whatever you were just talking about. Well, I didn't say you had a poop in your. I oh said, my god! <laughs> He's a a brown stain. Reading on it. What I, oh my god! What I said was she probably had a brown stain. I had to check her under if she had a brown stain. I it's don't just funny. Hear you talk about <laughs> That's how bad it was. You shit your pants. Oh you know? my god! 
God, Lord, help me. All right. So listen, guys, today I asked everyone on Instagram. I wanted to know what you wanted to hear Joe and I talk about on the podcast, on the podcast. Sorry. And let me look right now. I'm going to take some of your questions that you guys wanted to know. Okay. Uh, some people said mom guilt. How do you get over it when you have date nights? I have young ones and she has obviously, well, mom guilt when it comes to date nights, I don't think you should have guys. I'm going to talk you out of that one right now. Unless you're having a date night three, four nights a week, you should not have any mom guilt for a date night because the date night with your hubby is going to make you a better mom, I promise. Okay. Or else you're going to pull your hair out of your head. So I choose to let you guys know there should be zero mom guilt. I get plenty of mom guilt for you know, missing events for when I'm at my events and working and my child is at a cheer comp or a wrestling, there's my mom guilt. But I do not have mom guilt for going out on a date night with Joe and um, like leaving the kids at home with a babysitter. So you should not either. And that is my advice to you on that. that Definitely is- should be once a week and you shouldn't feel guilty about that. Unless you're doing it like three, four times a week, you're leaving your kids home. All right. But once or twice a week, having a date night, totally acceptable. There should be zero mom guilt for that. The thing I do know is when you have toddlers and little ones, though, I know, especially like the little girls, I remember Antonia when she was little, she'd be like, take me, mommy. Why are you leaving with, I want to go to dinner too. And they give you this guilt trip. But trust me, they get over that. Screw that guilt trip. You know why? You need to, you need to be with your hubby or else you're going to pull your hair out the next day. Yeah. You guys have to have some adult time. So yeah. don't have mom guilt. Yeah, over screw that, that guilt trip because when they turn 16, they leave. They don't want to even be with you. They're yeah. gone all the time. A lot of people are talking about having teens and how and how hard it is. And it is hard, guys. It is. I don't know. I mean, I know we talked a little bit about Antonia dating on um, the last podcast with Joe, right? Yeah. Um, but It's rough. It's rough because their personalities are getting rough. Their attitudes are on a different level. They have strong opinions. I, it's very hard for me to give complete advice for teens because I would say it varies between like boys and girls and just every kid is different. Um, but I think I have to be patient with them. I do let a lot that they say, I I really pick and choose my battles because I feel like I could yell at them all day long. So I, I, and, and, and and that's where, she does yell a little too much and I say, listen, slow down. You can't yell at everything because they're not going to take you serious. I pick what to yell at. Like some, sometimes she'll say in front of me, Joe, you're not going to yell at them? And I sit down like, you know, uh, okay, guys, what are you doing? And you know, I don't want to always be the parent that's yelling because I want them to also respect when I do yell at them. Because a mom is bitching at the kids all the time because she's trying to be a mom. Ooh, I really like this person. You know, what? so so pick and choose how to what you're going to yell at and, and, and discipline them. Hey, everyone. This is Heather Dubrow. And do I have some exciting news for you? We are launching a variety of new episodes that are going to have amazing special guests, some of my close friends, and so much more. It's going to be really fun. And we're going to get to hear from fans new friends, and get an inside look of my world. We're really excited for you to listen and join in for Heather Dubrow's World on Podcast One. Episodes drop on Thursdays and Fridays. Tune in on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, or wherever you get your podcasts. Okay, ready, Joe? They want to know, what Joe noticed about you that was so different compared to all of his other girls that he dated. I just, just another fun fact about Joe Gorga, in case anyone doesn't know. <laughs> you're what? such a loser. No, you're a loser. Joe was engaged, oh, guys, twice yeah. before me. Like, what are you, I just a lover boy no, that wants he- to get married? Can't help that women threw themselves at me. No, and no, I you had, bought I- a ring and put a ring on it. I did, because she was so good to me. She, when she drove by, by my bill, <laughs> my fork. She didn't All bitch right. at me. Okay. I don't know. You no, know. you didn't have a building back then. So <sighs> just, we don't have to talk about any specific oh. humans. All right. Just what, what, this person said, what does Joe notice about you compared to all the other girls he's dated? Like, why was I different for you? Was no, I different? Or you were just like, hey, time to freaking no, get married. No, no, it was not that. Um, actually, when I met Melissa, I was kind of over. I was enjoying myself. I didn't want to be with a girl. 
you know, I just wanted to have a great time. And she came out of nowhere. And I don't know, man. It was just like really love at first sight. And I fell in love with her the minute I saw her. I was uh, extremely attracted to her. And then when I met her, I was so impressed with her because she was so put together. I mean, she was working three jobs. She was putting herself through college. And... Um, she was just reminded me of me like she was a hustler, but she she knew about family values. She loved family values and everything I said she agreed on. Like I said, all right, well, I would love to get, you know, let's get married. I, I want kids. I want kids. I want I want to, you know, I want dinner on the table. Yeah, I love to make dinner. Uh, you know, she, everything. She was just it just we clicked and it worked and it was just it was just meant to be, I guess. uh True love. It was awesome. It really was. And that's what made it like, I'm going to be honest with you. My, my exes, I, when I was engaged or whatever, um, true story. I was back at the, back then I was a landscaper. So I was, um, with oh, this. please don't tell me about how everybody oh. bent over when jo- when you were a landscaper in their robes and showed you their vaginas. We're not talking about that. We'll talk about that next episode. But I was oh, a landscaper. I, wanna, I thought you were. Uh, we were. Tell that. No, no. I was about. A, I was a landscaper. So I had so many doubts when I was engaged. When I was engaged the first time, I had so many doubts. So um, one of my customers, this seventy five year old man, very successful man, I would sit there and, and I said, "Listen, I'm about to get married, but I just." I, I don't know, and I kept on saying, I don't know about this, I don't know about that, and you know what the man said to me? He goes, let me tell you something, son. You have a lot of doubts, and when you have a doubt, get out, and that stuck with me forever. You did have a lot of doubts? I had a lot of doubts. Just really? a lot of little doubts that with when I met you, there wasn't one doubt, not one, which was pretty like amazing. Like you just want to be with me every single day? Yeah, but it was just, it would, you know, like if I had so many doubts, you know what happens? People are so insecure that they think they have to get married, that they have so many doubts about that person, and then they go through with it, and they get married, and then they get divorced because those doubts became big problems in their life. You cannot have doubts. Stay single. Don't get married. You'll find that true love. Yeah, Trust I say me. wait. Listen, I do say that. For anyone out there who is dating someone and they're, you know, in a serious relationship or you've moved in together and you think you're engaged or you're about to get engaged and you do have doubts. I, I honestly have to say, I believe in that. Like there is no rush. Give it one more year. One year is not going to change your life. I always say that you have to, if you're having doubts, there's always going to be a couple doubts show. There's never going to be just absolutely no Why, doubt. you had doubts about me? Um, be honest. Like when you met me, I mean, you were a little more Italian than I wanted to be honest. Like I always said, like, I'm yeah, not, but that wasn't a doubt. That that's was a doubt. In, that because was I'm beginning. like, I can't believe I'm doing it. But no, no. no, I didn't have a doubt. That was in the I, beginning when you met me. You're like, all right, he's real Italian. Yeah. Like okay. when I, I didn't know if I wanted not, to date you just not, because you were so Italian. We're, let's talk about when you <laughs> dated me. When you first I'm sick dated. of the pasta vasoli. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You, you love the pasta vasoli, the Italian sausage. Right? How much pasta vasoli can I eat? She wants the Italian <laughs> sausage on a, ha- ha- a hero. Give her one with the Italian no, no, peppers. No, no, no. That had nothing to do yeah. with it. I didn't want like For the, for the record, to... people, when, you know, she, when no, I, no, when no, I no, gave no, her the... Salzit, she didn't know what to do with it. She was like, Mom, Mommy, yeah, and he even got a big one. Oh, my she God. She was so excited. She had to call to her sisters it. and tell them, wow, he's okay, pretty amazing. Wait, I want to get through because we don't have a lot <laughs> of time truth. left. She I called and she called him. She's like, oh, my God, and he's blessed down there. I can't believe it. Hallelujah. Oh, my God. Yeah. So, wait, did, you didn't answer it. So, so when, we, when, when, we, when I took you out on your first date, right, did you have any doubts after that? Like, the, no, not a first date. Yes, first day and on. Did you have any doubts? Um, no. I would say like from when I. Uh, no. Why are you even thinking about it? Because, because you never left first, my house. I'll you tell you around, why. I'll tell you why you, I'm you thinking about it. Because the very first day, I'm not going to say what you said, but you did say something a little silly to me that made me go a little like, hmm. This is why I don't want to date an Italian. You yeah, did. but you said hmm, but you came right back. All right, but you shouldn't have said that to me. That was a little weird. Right? Just admit it. You're just staring at me because I'm just calling you out. <laughs> I don't give a shit. Tell you, 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 no, no, I'm no. human. No, no, listen, you humans, can't say that. Listen, now. I am a human and humans make mistakes. Okay. I am not perfect. You know, I'm not. And and back then was a different time. I okay? guess. I'm going to say, I, I, I'll even admit what I said. I don't care. Back you're then. admit what you said because I don't know. I don't care because I did it. I did it. I made a mistake. But you seemed like you were so into And here's me why I did it. I'm going to tell you why I did it. I'm going to tell you why. Because I was cocky. I was successful. 
And it was you were a twenty eight year old cocky yeah, guy. That's I why I didn't want a cocky twenty eight year old. It was, Italian. and it wasn't right to say. So you want to know what I said? I sat on the couch right after I made her dinner. I made her a beautiful dinner, and I said, and I had all this artist work on my walls. I lived alone in a nice house. And I said, I'm going to paint you on my walls, and she was like, Really? Yeah. I no, said, yes, but I you am. were. Yeah, you she did got, say that. She got so into that, right? She fell for the for the little line. You did. So I said, when we're done, I said, want to go sit on a couch. Now, when we were sat on the couch, we were talking. I put the fireplace on. I put my arm around her, and I gave her a little hug. Who it, says this? Oh, my God. I yeah. feel like everyone's going to be in shock. This is rude. You said something. This is so rude, and I'm going to admit. You said something along the lines of, like, you put your arm around me. You were like, oh, so, you're yep. a little thicker than I thought you were, or, or something to that. Or, or, or like You were thicker. You were about, thicker. what, you're 15, little... 20 pounds heavier then? What? No, I was maybe eight pounds. I had college weight on yeah, me. Yeah, she was so drinking I would say, a college I would say weight, it was probably you know. eight, uh, maybe barely ten. I no, would say I, I wish we still more. had your jeans from back then. You put them on. They're probably like double the size. No, they're 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 actually, I would say, two sizes bigger. Right, you were a little bigger. So it, bigger. it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter what you were or what. Which, I, which, which, and I didn't I mean nothing because I was in love with you. that would be because people would but look at you like you're crazy. I so. was in crazy about you. It didn't matter. I just may be at the moment the way I felt you and how, when I put my arm around me, like, wow, you're a little thicker than I expected. But what guy says that? <laughs> how did I ever come back? So, I literally went home why? and said to my sister, I don't know. Like, he's so sweet. There's something so, like, nice about him and charming and, like, we had a good time and he... He fake made me dinner. He poured it out of like, you know, you fake made me dinner. You made me tiny, you made me dinner. Yeah. And I was like, there's yeah. something so like charming about him. I'm like, but believe he said this to me. I'm like, who says that? That scares you going well, forward because you're like, it's a little bit of like a control. Well, ad- what is that? But that was like I said, I was that was 22 you, you say years. Right now you're sorry. And that I was am so, so wrong. I, well, listen, that was 22 years ago. I was uh, I was, you know, that Italian cocky thing, which I hate. I don't like, um, but when around her, um, I kind of put my guard down a little bit, but in the beginning, I guess I had to like say, you know, I'm the man, I guess. I don't know. Was it wrong? A hundred percent. And I apologize. I apologize. But I wish I want you back like that. I do. I want you. I want you bigger. <laughs> You're too skinny now. Oh, great. Yeah. Thank you. I want you back to, you know, Unbelievable. All right. I did. So. We're going to go to another question because we have time for one more. And there's so many here. Like I can, we can literally talk all day. How do you increase your sex life with your spouse when you have young kids and they're like nine years old, 10 years old, and you've been married for nine years. So it's, it's tough. And they said they have kids. They've been married for nine years. Like, so at that point, how do you not make it like a routine? Because it does become a routine and people just give up on it. Right. I feel like a lot of people we know even just get like oh well the kids we're gonna come in the room and you know it's like the same thing like after a while you get into a routine it's like oh it's saturday night we're gonna have sexual relations well you know? I, I don't i that's why i don't think it should be like a routine it should be spontaneous and anywhere you could sneak away you know we have some kids out there anywhere you could sneak away you run like so let's say they're upstairs you you run down in the basement real quick i listen i've done it where and I'm going to be honest. We would. I feel we like would just be in, one so let me partner finish. has to be that way. We, yeah, I, we were we were in the kitchen one time, right? We're just. We're, Joe, we're you're going to give a personal story. Away? I am. I am. I, I don't am. really know no, if no, I sh- want sh- you to. Why we, are you whispering? We, like someone can hear you. I don't want my kids to hear it. I, we were in the kitchen one time, right? In the kitchen, our kids are literally. They were younger, so they were like, uh, let's say, they were like seven, eight, nine, right around there, like in that in that in that range. And they're all they're watching TV in the family room, and we could see them. And the family's no, very no, close. Seven, eight, nine is old. They were two, three, and four. Whatever they were, they were five, six. Whatever. Three and four. They were not seven, eight, or nine. Nah, they were two. Joey's they eleven, were like, honey. No, it was not two years ago. <laughs> Maybe all right. Definitely so. two, three, or four. They were even watching, if they were, they were watching uh, Dora. And even Sponge if they, even if they were fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, it doesn't matter. I would do the same thing. So we were just sitting there. She's cooking. I get right behind her, and the kids are over there, and literally, I'm rubbing her guys. I'm gonna get a little graphic with this because you know what? You, you should. This is what keeps a fam, a, a marriage together. The little spice. So I grab her. And I get behind her, and I, you know, and All I right. slide, and, and you know, and 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 right in the kitchen okay, as I'm watching, he, shh, 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 as I'm watching our children, 
just watching Nemo or whatever they were doing. They're not seeing anything because we were behind. But, you know, it just happened. And it was cool and it was sexual and it was hot for that oh little moment. And listen, maybe maybe my wife, let's say, it, it, it didn't enjoy it that much because she was like, oh my God, they're kids, the kids, kids. But when, when it was over, when she goes to sleep at night and she thinks about it or she when I leave for work the next day, she's like, wow. He took me. Like, just like that movie, Fifty Shades of Grey. Oh, here we go. And here we... I'm obsessed with Fifty Shades of Grey, guys. It's so hot. And that's what we do all the time. Every little moment I get in, we get it in. And it's sexual. And you keep it different. And and I always look at her like I talk to myself. Listen, I say in my head that you are, oh my God, she's amazing. She's this. She's great. You know? And... So are I'm, you saying that we need to be spontaneous? That's what makes Spontaneous, and it's all in your mind, too. If you think about it, and you say, oh, my God, we've been married 14 years, and oh, my God, it's Tuesday night. Why are we having it Tuesday night? Or why are we having it on Thursday? And, and if you, your mind is everything. You have to tell your mind it's amazing. All right, so you're saying you're saying you need to be spontaneous. That's that's going to help because they're asking for advice after nine years, and I would say that too. I would say you can't be in the routine. You can't say like, "Oh, it's been five days. Today's Saturday night. Let's like spontaneous." Sometimes I I would try to when they're least expecting it. Possibly, maybe one time you're coming out of the shower. Maybe the kids aren't around. Maybe you guys got home late. Like. When it's spontaneous, I would say that's going to be my advice to someone who has a lot of kids, married for nine years, wants to keep it. Do something spontaneous. So at least try it once a week, something spontaneous. Spontaneous I think that would be... And a mindset. Your mind is everything. Speaking of spontaneous, hold on. Look, little Joey's walking by. Joey, come say hi. Joey, come here. Come say hi. Come here. Hi. I just want you to say hi, everybody. Mindset, guys. You're never at home. Just Just say hi, everybody. They can't see you. Just say hi. Hi. (laughs) <laughs> that's it that's all you got I just got okay. braces wow hey, it looks so got. different yes, but listen it, it's remember this guys it's a mindset your mind is everything it's so powerful I can tell I could my mind could say I could think Melissa I hate her I hate her today and I could say she is she I'm not even attracted to her anymore and if I tell my mind that it's gonna so happen Joe is saying it's mind over matter it so is. you have to tell your mind when you're looking at your spouse that you've been looking at for the last 10 years sitting on that couch across from you and you guys are watching that show and they're probably in oversized sweat pan, oversized sweatpants and you know a big baggy sweatshirt you need and their hair is up like in a messy bun or vice versa with the guy okay you need to look at them and be like mm, tell your mind needs to tell you that you're into them that they're good looking you remind yourself you know of something is that what you're saying no no you, your mind is your mind is a, your most powerful tool it is. if you if you say there and say like oh my god i've been married 18 years or i've been married 10 years and we have kids and and, and it's 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 the same thing that's what you're telling yourself it is. Tell yourself that uh, we've been married 10 years and I can't wait to be with this man or this woman again because we've been together 10 years. That is so special today. You've been together 15 years, 12 years, 6 years. That is special. People cannot even be together for a year. Okay. All right. So That's sad. All right. Got it. So what you're basically saying is, well, what we're both kind of saying is be spontaneous Try different positions, different locations, different times of the day. Just try different. That is my advice to married yeah, couples different it up. that I've been married for a very long time. There you go. I love it. All Just right? try so, it and do it. So that's do our it. marriage advice for today, guys. Um, we are going to wrap this up by just telling you guys that we appreciate the love. We read all of your DMs, all of your comments. We love how much you guys love on display and that you love hearing our banter or whatever it is we do. I don't know. I think we're just honest with each other. And the truth is we don't get mad at each other, right? So we can be honest, right, yeah. Joe? We, we tell each other honestly tell how we how feel is, yeah. and, like, we're not going to be mad at each other later. You know what that is? Communi- communication is everything yeah. and we do communicate a lot we, we really do not holding a grudge maybe grudges suck don't hold them i used to hold grudges i was a grudge holder no more but now you know this podcast made me very horny oh my god stop <laughs> it he's, did he's being Can't dramatic to... guys no, but anyway no, we are so happy we're reading everything you say we love that you guys love the show um we will be back very soon together but just keep sending me the conversations that you want us to have because i love talking marriage with you guys i love having joe's little manly advice on our show um keep staying stay tuned 
to stay tuned to the Real Housewives of New Jersey, okay? Because it just keeps getting better and crazier by the minute. So make sure you guys keep watching that. And make sure you guys head over to envybymg.com. We're going to see very soon this new story. You're going to be so excited, guys. Wait till you see it. It's incredible. So we love you, Joe. Thank you so much for being a guest today on the show and giving us wait, all wait. of your incredible Italian man advice. Why, you done? No, how about me? How about how about... How about my comedy shows? You just talked about Envy. Oh, you want to talk about, about comedy? Yeah. Okay, uh, we, but we got, okay, we so got, we got, Nashville's got, next, guys. So Nash- Joe will be in Nashville. I don't know where everybody is out there in Nashville, but Nashville and Orlando are next. And you can go to therealjoegorga.com if you want to come to see any of those. Those are going to be so great. Boston's coming up. Boston, Atlantic too. City. I know immediately it's Nashville and okay. Orlando. So. Very so good. definitely, if you're in those areas, check out therealjoegorga.com and uh, get tickets. We're always there in the audience cheering them on. And it's just, it's really such a fun night. It's a fun night out. It's fun. Yeah. Yeah. You're a funny I'm, guy, bro. Uh, you're a funny guy. No, you're no. funny. You're funny. I love you. All right, guys. Yeah. Love you. Peace. Bye. Penny days are back, just in time for spring at J.C. Penny. Stock up on wardrobe staples to home essentials, like tees for the family. Select styles starting at seven dollars. Soak up the savings with five dollar home expressions, quick dry bath towels in an array of colors. Or use your coupon to save an extra twenty five percent store wide. Incredible prices, spectacular savings. Hurry and Sunday. J.C. Penny offers in coupon valid three twenty four to three twenty seven. Some exclusions apply. See store or jcp.com for details. Power Penny deals excluded from coupon.